Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So I finally got my hands on the iPhone leather wallet. I've been waiting for this for a couple weeks now and I've had some time with it. And I wanna give you my thoughts about this wallet and uh, why you might actually wanna pick one of these up. Now, before you go in disliking this video and clicking away, yes, I know what most people are saying about this wallet. Uh, if it doesn't stick to the iPhone, what, what's the point of this wallet, right? And that's where I have a very different opinion. Um, and let me take a step back, actually. This is my daily driver wallet. This is the Bellroy Micro Sleeve. Uh, I love this wallet. It's a really nice wallet. It's a very slim wallet, as you can see. And I've got two cards on one side, two cards on the other side, and then a driver's license and some cash and a couple insurance cards on the inside. This is basically all I travel with uh, day in, day out. And uh, it pretty much it's been enough for me. Now, when I saw the iPhone 12 release, um, you know, it's more of the same, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, the camera got better, the processor got better, but it's all the same until they talked about MagSafe. And uh, MagSafe here, it was really interesting to me because for once, it's something new, right? It's something unexpected. And when they announced the iPhone uh, MagSafe wallet, it was like, oh, this is really, really similar to what I've got here, the micro sleeve. And, and as you can see, dimension wise, thickness wise, this is the micro, or sorry, the iPhone wallet is just ever so slightly thinner than what I've already got. So I was like, okay, if I can pare it down to two credit cards and one driver's license, I'll be all set. And I was actually very excited about this wallet. I was more excited about this wallet than the phone. I know, small little things, right? And that's why I wanna talk about my experiences with this wallet. Now, the two credit cards that I have decided to go with here is, and these two credit cards are, are the uh, Metal Chase Sapphire Reserve card and a Costco City card. Uh, I really don't need any other credit cards. These are pretty much what I use. And then on top of that, if I pull my driver's license in, you know, slot that in here, you can see all three cards go in very well. And I can get this to focus here. You can see here, all three cards go in very well, uh, no additional bulk. And by just pushing the back of it, I can get all three cards out really easily. So uh, mission accomplished, right? Basically it works. Now. I've also got here, this is my Apple Card. Apple was uh, advertising their Apple Card with their Apple Wallet, huh, go figure, right? Um, if I swap this out, swap the Chase Sapphire Reserve out with the Apple Card here, you can see that the Apple Card is actually a little bit thicker of a card. You, this is metal, that is metal, but or this is titanium, that is just, I think, stainless steel, but this card is actually a little bit thicker. So putting this card in here, you see, even with the Apple Card, it fits in there pretty well. And it's not too snug because just a little uh, push from the back and the card comes out. So um, basically three cards, whatever cards you've got, pretty much should work with this wallet. Now, one thing to note is that all these cards do not have the raised uh, numbers. So the Chase, the metal cards don't have the raised numbers. The plastic cards are completely smooth. Uh, that's why the cards are sitting right next to each other, no problem. Now, if you do have a credit card that has the raised numbers, you might wanna put them you know, flat side to flat side on the back so that the numbers are pointing outwards. Uh, that way you can maybe decrease a little bit of the bulk. Otherwise, there, you'll have a little bit of gap between them. Uh, but still, plastic cards are thinner than the metal cards, so you should still probably be okay. One of the most interesting things about this wallet is that down here inside, there seems to be a friction clamp that clamps the card inside. As you can see here, I've just got a single uh, driver's license. So it's a very thin card, but even with a single card, it doesn't fall out. So it's enough friction to keep the single card in and it's able to expand to three cards as well. So. It's very flexible. You can have just a single card, two cards, or even up to three cards. Now, let's talk about how it sits on the phone here. You can see I've got the phone right here, and by just 
moving the wallet to the back of this phone here, you can see that it recognizes that there is an accessory and you get a little logo, the MagSafe logo. Uh, what does it do? Not much, but just the fact that it knows that there is an accessory on the back. Now, let's talk about the magnetic strength. As you can see here, during normal, normally it stays in place pretty well, and, and you know it's it's not going to go anywhere. If you if during normal usage, see you're going to hit it pretty hard. It's it's really not, you know, it's jumping a little bit, but but the magnet is relatively strong, in the sense that it's it shouldn't fall off by itself. Now, if you were to slide into your pocket and you clip the edge, yeah, it'll come off. But I don't think that's a deal breaker because again, from where I'm coming from. I've got this wallet right here, and you know, if it sits, in, if the, the wallet and the phone sits in my pocket like this, they're kind of just floating around in my, in my pocket, right? If I've got a phone and a wallet that kind of sticks together and goes into my pocket, then it just takes up even less space. And if you treat it like a separate wallet, which it really is a separate wallet that just kind of clips to the back of your phone, Sometimes, if you have that kind of mindset, then that makes a lot more sense because, you know, it's, you're gonna have to take this wallet and take it off and it's designed to be taken off and, you know, you use your wallet. You can even put one wallet in one pocket, one phone in the other pocket, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes it comes together and it just you know, comes back to its home. So if you treat it like a separate wallet rather than something that has to be on the phone, then I think you'll be a lot happier about the performance of the magnet. And that's where this kind of makes a little bit more sense. The thickness you can see right here is really not that much. It's really actually thinner than the phone. And it's, it's I wanna say it's like three quarters the thickness of the phone. And in the pocket, uh, especially with the wallet on the outside of your pocket, uh, the screen towards your thigh, uh, it really doesn't take a, a, a much additional bulk and that kind of frees up one of the pockets since you've got both in one pocket. If you really want to go live dangerously, however, what you can do is you can go caseless. And this is a silicone case, by the way. You know, this sits on the back of the phone. It's really, really thin like this, and it actually is a pretty nice grip. So um, on, you know, being on the back of the phone, it kind of contour contours to your hand, your palm, so it sits really, really nicely in the hand. Uh, a little bit better of a grip, actually. So um, I know my wife is gonna, gonna be angry, not if, but when I smash this phone and, and break the glass somehow if I don't use the case. That's why you know, I, I'll have to use the case. But um, look at that. That looks actually pretty awesome. Just the wallet sitting on the phone and you've got a metal steel, stainless steel phone, glass, Pretty cool. Now the actual wallet itself, it's actually a pretty rigid wallet. Uh, you got thick leather on one side and then you got your magnets buried on the inside. And uh, the leather is very similar to the Apple iPhone leather cases that you've we've come to know. You got a little embossed Apple logo, again, similar to the Apple leather cases. It's got a little bit of heft to it and it's actually, it's because it's got a rigid, rigid backside it's not super light, so uh, it's got a good feel to it. In summary, if you are able to cut down your wallet down to just one driver's license and two credit cards, and uh, you don't really use cash, and you treat this as a standalone wallet that just happens to be able to clip to the phone from time to time, then I think that this wallet might you know, be appropriate for you. Uh, if you're looking for something that is supposed to be stuck to your uh, phone, like a wallet case, then I think you need to be looking somewhere else because uh, indeed this is meant to be removable, easily removable. Um, you really need to be treating this like a standalone wallet. So anyway, that's kind of my two cents here. That's kind of why I ended up purchasing this and I'm pretty happy with uh, the performance, the way it feels and the way the wallet just, you know, clips to the back of the phone and can be easily removed. So again, that's just my two cents. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you wanna see more, consider subscribing. It's Stan, I'll see you guys in the next one.